Welcome back to Physics of Flight, and this time we're using science. Now, I'm not a scientist. That's just it, I'm not a scientist. But I am gonna use some science to kind of design some experiments that challenge the common knowledge around disc golf. This first episode is on backhand versus forehand, and to make sure we're all on the same page, we'll start with a bit of an overview. Most people are either dominant with their backhand or their forehand. And they're seen kind of as opposites, and that's because they curve opposite directions. A backhand is gonna curve to the left for a right-handed player, and a forehand is gonna curve to the right. And the reason they do that is because they're spinning opposite directions. A backhand is spinning clockwise, and a forehand is spinning counterclockwise. And that's because of how they're thrown. When a backhand is thrown, the, disc, the, the wrist opens up coming from like a neutral position and the disc pivots out of the hand and gets some resistance on it which kind of snaps it and gets that clockwise rotation going. And a forehand, the wrist starts open and it moves to a closed position and the fingers kind of push against the rim and it gets a little bit of resistance from the thumb and the hand and that causes that counterclockwise rotation and really gets some snap on it. But why does the rotation dictate which direction a disc is fading? Now the reason a disc fades is when it gets towards the end of its flight, it's still rotating but it's also falling and moving forward. So as a disc is moving forward and falling, the air resistance is sort of pushing upwards on the front of the disc. But that doesn't just lift the front because the disc is rotating. If you think about a point on the edge of the disc, it's moving in a circle. And so the extra force that pushes up on the front isn't just going to lift it up, it's going to cause it to start to move upwards, but it's also still moving to the side. So the side that actually lifts is around on either side. You can actually see it with just about anything that's rotating. If something is spinning and you push up or down around the outside, the side of the disc is actually what's gonna be affected. But I am not a physicist. I, this is just as good as I can come up with from the research that I've done online. But uh, if you know more, let me know down in the comments. But besides the direction of rotation, what's the difference between a backhand and a forehand? Is there a reason to throw, for example, if you threw a lefty forehand and a righty backhand, those are rotating the same direction. Is there a reason to throw one or the other? Well, that's kind of what we're gonna look into in this episode of Physics of Flight. So now that we've established some of the basic differences between a backhand and a forehand, the first thing that jumps to my mind to test is the speed of the rotation. So I've got Chris Clemens here to help me experiment. For this segment on Physics of Flight, we're gonna test the difference between a forehand and a backhand in the rotations and how much it's spinning relative to how fast it's going. So I've got Chris Clemens here, a known good thrower of forehands and backhands, and he's gonna be kind of like my guinea pig. We're gonna be out here, we're gonna throw 10 forehands at a given speed and then 10 backhands and try to match the speed as close as we can. And then we're gonna take a video of that and see how fast the disc is rotating if it's at the same speed, both forehand and backhand. So Chris, what do you think? From throwing a lot of forehands and backhands, do you think that the forehand is gonna rotate slower? I, I do. I think a backhand will produce more spin. Do you, what do you think that results in later on down the line? Is that more control or more distance? Um, yeah, I think there's a reason why when people throw distance, they throw backhand, you know, because if you're, if you're getting a lot of spin, that's just really good for disc flight. So I think, I think a backhand is gonna produce more spin, maybe quite a bit, but we'll see. All right, well, that's what we're here to find out. That's what I think as well, but I've been wrong many times. So the testing methodology, if you come over here and look at it, we've got a little bit of a rudimentary tee pad here with a couple of discs that's gonna be the, the this place that Chris is throwing from. We've got a radar gun here that's going to read the speed as Chris throws it. And that'll show up right here and I'll read that out to make sure it's within kind of the, the margin for error for the speed. And then this camera here is set up to film that. And I actually can't check the rotation now. So we're gonna kinda check that in a later segment and just a little bit after this one. So you ready to get going? For sure. All right, so our, our, our sample size is 10. So I need 10 forehands that are roughly at the so same just speed. Throw with this one? Yes, this is a disc that we're using to throw. Let's show it off. This is a, a Biofusion Defender that I had Dymax whip up for me. This has got like the markings on it so you can see how fast. It's way over complicated and we don't actually need that, but it's cool, so that's what we're gonna use. Good. Ready for test one. Cool. 61. Sixty-one. Sixty-one. Was that slower? It felt slower. That was 61. I think smoother. Sixty? Smoother is like better. Mm-hmm. Because when I feel like I get a hold of it a little bit, I think it's, that's not five. Any, it's not any faster. Sixty-one. Sixty-two. Sixty-two. 
63. Oh. 62. 63. 61. 62. Perfect. So we just finished the forehands. How does it feel? Does it feel like it's easy to hit the same speed over and over again? Uh, yeah. Yeah, it feels pretty, pretty comfortable. Pretty consistent for you? Mm -hmm. All right, let's switch it over to backhand and see how for that sure. goes. For sure. It is way easier to throw forehands, though. Just like standstill. Yeah, because you're not wearing yourself out as much? Yeah, I mean, it's just more natural. 61. 59. 61. 62, smashed. 59. 61. 60. 61. 61. That one didn't register. So we don't know the results quite yet of the, the whole experiment, because I'm going to put those in a later segment, but how do, how do you feel like the, the testing went? Do you think from having thrown at the same speed, do you feel like the forehand was spinning slower? Uh, I don't know. I don't know now. It felt, uh, it felt pretty good, and like I can throw the forehand pretty long, so maybe I do put a lot of spin on it. I don't know. I don't know now. All right, it's going to be interesting to find out. Yeah. So I don't know what the outro is going to be. So it'll be interesting to find out. We'll put that in a later segment, and that's it for the segment on physics of flight. So to find the rotations per second, I took two frames from when the disc was in view of the secondary camera and rotated the second one backwards until the markings on the disc in the second frame matched up with the markings on the first frame. Then I divided 360 by the amount of rotation and divided 60 by the result of that to get revolutions per second. I did that for every shot, both forehand and backhand, and here are the results. The forehand had an average speed of 61.4 miles per hour, with an average of 14.75 revolutions per second. The backhand had an average speed of 60.75 miles per hour, with an average of 24.3 revolutions per second. So the forehand was rotating about 10 revolutions per second slower than the backhand. So now that we know that there is a difference between a backhand and a forehand as far as the speed of the rotation, I've got Eric Oakley here to help me test to see if that makes a difference farther down the line. We've got a stack of the same discs and a wide open field. So welcome back to Physics of Flight. For this segment, we're gonna be testing the stability difference between a forehand and a backhand because we've already established that forehands rotate slower. I wanna see what effect that has on down the flight path, how that affects how the disc actually flies. So I have known good thrower of forehands and backhands here, Eric Oakley, Hello. and we are trying out something a little bit different. Tell us about this disc here. So this is the prototype Sargent. Uh, it's a pretty good higher speed disc. I'd put it at about 11 speed. I'm not sure what the exact numbers are going to be on it, but it's pretty neutral in flight and uh, handles torque really, really well. So I think that's going to really uh, help it stand up on these backhands and forehands and we're going to get a really good consistent uh, uh, conclusion on what happens with these discs. So the Sargent right now, I don't know when, when you're watching this, but right now the Sargent is very much in the prototype stage. So this is just a good example. We just had a bunch of these and they're going to be the exact same. So we're going to get the most consistent result out of using, uh, we have nine Sargents and we're going to try and use them in, in the exact same way. So the way we're going to do this test is we're actually going to go down to the other side of the field because that will give us a little bit of a headwind, which will help get the disc to turn and exemplify any turn or exaggerate any turn that the disc already has. So the idea is I have my, my radar gun here. We're going to try and get Eric to throw on the same angle and the same power, both forehand and backhand, and we'll see which shot turns more. Eric, what do you think the results are going to be? Uh, I think, you know, what I've seen with uh, many different forehands, uh, players tend to you know, they, they roll their wrists and stuff like that. So it, it, it leads me to believe that the forehand will have a lot more turn um, and, and uh, you know, same amount of fade as a backhand uh, just because it, it's pulling so far over. Uh, but, you know, really with, how, with what I've thrown, like, it could be the complete opposite. So it's kind of, it's gonna be really interesting to kind of feel it out and see how it goes. Definitely, I definitely think with the slower rotation of the forehand, that's gonna give the disc a little bit less gyroscopic stability and then let it turn a little bit more. But mm -hmm. there's only one way to find out, and so we're out here to do the testing. Uh, let's, let's jump right into it. Let's do it. 62. So for this experiment, the results are a little bit less cut and dry than the other one. 62. So while Eric is throwing, I'll explain a little bit of my thought process behind designing this experiment. My hypothesis was that the forehand throw would turn more than the backhand at the same speed and angle. So Eric ended up throwing eight forehands and eight backhands at roughly the same speed. 62. One of the issues we ran into was repeating the same angle forehand 64. and backhand. 
Most disc golfers visualize the line they want the disc to fly on, rather than the exact angle they want to release the disc on. So at first, Eric was subconsciously throwing the forehand on less hyzer than the backhand, because that more closely mirrored the flight. But after some more throws, we ended up actually seeing less turn out of the forehand on the same hyzer release. The backhand tended to flip up and glide to the right, sometimes holding the turn into the ground, where the forehand was much more likely to flip to flat and fade, often without even gliding to the left at all. By the end of our testing, Eric had thrown eight backhands with an average speed of 62.63 miles per hour and eight forehands with an average speed of 61.75 miles per hour. 62. Sixty-two. That's the exact same speed. You did it. Sixty-two. Sixty-three. Well, that's just, that's what we saw from the other backhands where it would flip over to the right and kind of finish straight. Sixty-three. Sixty-three. I feel like that is coming out. Sixty-one. Sixty-one. Sixty-two. See, that one came out on probably less hyzer than the backhands, and it still finished harder. Here you can see the results where the backhands are much more in line with the target with the forehands off to the right. To clarify some, I selected the two throws forehand and backhand that were closest to each other on the release angle and speed, and put them side by side. Then I mirrored the footage of the forehand so it's easier to see the difference. Here you can see that the forehand definitely doesn't turn as much as the backhand. After getting plenty of throws in on a hyzer release, Eric wanted to try a flat release to see if that made a difference. I didn't originally choose the flat release because the margin for error is smaller. A little extra tilt either direction at the beginning of the flight will make a much bigger difference in a flat release, whereas a slight hyzer release will be a little more forgiving while still showing the difference in turn. But even with the inconsistency of the flat release, the forehand is fading more and turning less than the backhand. That's flat. Okay. 64. Whoa! I think that's... 61. 62. Crunched. 63. So forehands are more stable than backhands then. All right, so we just finished our testing with the sergeant throwing both forehand and backhand on a little bit of a hyzer release, and we kind of had some surprising results. Uh, what, did we, what did we find out, Eric? Uh, the, the backhands were holding the turn a lot more. Um, and uh, not fading as hard, especially on the forehands. I think because the disc is moving slower, so when it, it, it's slowing down earlier and you're starting to see more of that fade kick in at the tail end of the flight. Yeah, definitely. I was, I was really surprised at the results here. I thought that because the backhand has more rotation, it was going to be more stable, but we definitely saw a good bit more turn out of a backhand at the same speed. And, and that's, that's what really is, is surprising to me. Do you feel like you had to throw the forehands a lot harder compared to the backhands, like for your maximum power level? Yeah, to reach, like, I think the, the magic number was around 62, mm -hmm. and that was a good speed that I knew I could, I could definitely hit for both. Um, but that's, that's at a pretty high end of my, my forehand uh, uh, power, and, and especially coming out in that flat to a, a hyzer release. So how does this translate on the course? Are you gonna be more likely to throw like hyzer flips or turnover shots backhand than forehand, or do uh, you? Yeah, yeah, I really, I really think uh, if I'm, 
if I need to get something to work from left to right uh, a long ways, the, turn the turnover backhand is really good because you keep it spinning, it keeps holding in the air, keeps everything going underneath and uh, makes it fly a long ways. For your, for your bag, do you think that people should start to try and throw less stable discs because they, they're going to act more stable on the forehand even if they threw them at the same power? Uh, as long as they uh, are getting the releases, so check out the other physics of flight about forehands, <laughs> plug. Um, and uh, really work on getting the release to be on that hyzer line because the, the more you can follow through on that hyzer and keep the disc on a hyzer, the more you're going to get out of the disc. The moment you start trying to manipulate and force the disc and you're working against the disc, most of these discs, they, they're friendly. They want to work with you, not against you. So the moment you work against them, they fight back. Um, so uh, definitely a lot of times where making these discs your friends and letting them work for you, it goes a long way. So uh, you know, get 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 under control with your angles and then you'll be able to use those more understable discs. Awesome. Well, thank you for your time. You can go ahead and ice your arm now. We've got some sitting for you over there. And uh, thanks for watching this episode of Physics of Flight. So that test was actually not at all the, the result that I was expecting to see. I definitely thought that the forehand would fly more stable because it would have less rotations and therefore less gyroscopic stability. But what I learned about gyroscopic stability is that it doesn't necessarily translate into disc stability. What gyroscopic stability is, is when something is spinning, it generally doesn't like to change angles that much because it's got a, a lot of inertia going around in that circle. So when the backhand is spinning a lot and it's over on that Anheuser angle, it's going to tend to hold that angle for a lot longer because it's spinning faster and it has more of that gyroscopic stability. Where the forehand, it's not spinning as much. So when it gets on that Anheuser angle, it's not going to try and hold it for as long compared to the backhand, so it's gonna fade out a little bit sooner. So that's the biggest difference I think that we saw in the backhand versus the forehand. Is so, so if you're on the course and you're going for distance, I definitely think the backhand is the best choice because usually you're trying to get that Anheuser flight to hold for a long time and then sort of pan out right at the very end. Whereas if you, were, if you had a, a similarly powered forehand and you could get that, that same sort of flight, the forehand is gonna fade out a little bit sooner and maybe not get you that extra little bit of distance. So as far as disc selection, I definitely think people shouldn't be as afraid to throw those understable discs on their forehand shots because they don't have to worry about it flipping over as much. The discs aren't gonna naturally try and hold that Anheuser angle for as long and you can end up with a lot more distance on a hyzer flip line versus that overstable disc just fading out a lot earlier. But let me know what you think about the results of these experiments. Let me know if it's what you thought it was gonna be and make sure you subscribe because next week, we're gonna take a look at max weight discs versus air plastic discs and we'll see which situations either one of them excel. So thanks for watching and we'll see you next time on Physics of Flight.